Welcome back for another video about Lego Technic pulleys. So I have in front of me here uh, three Lego Technic pulleys, a small pulley, a medium pulley, and a large pulley. And what all pulleys have in common is that they're simply a wheel with a groove. And that groove is used to guide or redirect a rope, a rubber band, or maybe even a chain. So a pulley is basically just a simple machine that humans use to build all kinds of more complicated machines and often to make work easier. And if you don't have any Technic pulleys, there's no reason that you can't just make some. If I grab a little piece of rope here and I run it over this pulley, you'll see that a pulley just has to be anything that can guide and control the movement of a rope. So if we don't have any Technic pulleys, we can quickly come up with something. I can take uh, this Technic pin and I can put a couple of radar dishes onto it and that makes a nice pulley and a nice wide flange to capture the rope. I can pop a wheel hub out of a large Technic wheel and this is going to make a great pulley, a nice big wide pulley for a rope. I can take the middle of a motorcycle wheel, any of these other hubs, and I can even build a pulley. If I grab a 2x2 two two round and put a few 4x4 four four rounds on it, I'm basically just making a pulley um, by creating a wheel in the middle that's going to hold the rope and a flange or guide on the side that's going to stop the rope from escaping as it runs. I can do this a little bit smaller as well, maybe with a 1x1 one one round brick, a radar dish, a 2x2 two two round tile, and any number of other pieces. You can also use a static object like this pin as a pulley. The rope can run over this rounded pin and while there's going to be more friction than a pulley, this will work as a redirect for a rope. So that brings us to uh, the question of what we might want to do with a pulley. So I'll start with a simple example here of a redirect. If I have a Lego person who needs to move all these heavy blocks from level one up to level two, it's going to be very difficult for her to do that by carrying them. Because as she's carrying the block, she's not only moving the weight of the block, she's also having to move the weight of her own body up and down the ladder. So if she's got a lot of work to do and she wants to make it easy, she might use a simple machine, a pulley, as a redirect. With a piece of rope, she can now move that red block safely and easily simply by pulling down on a rope that runs up and over this redirect. Now the redirect is called a redirect because it's changing the direction of force. When we pull down on the rope, the load is going up. The direction of the force has been changed by the pulley. And there's no reason you can't use multiple redirects. If I wanted to add another redirect down here, I can now change the direction of force, my hand moving sideways, back and forth, into the load moving up and down. And this is especially useful if you have a motor, or maybe a big strong animal, out here that's going to move sideways left and right across flat ground in order to move a heavy object up and down. All right, let's get this guy out of here for a moment. So that's our first uh, example here of using some pulleys as a redirect in order to make work easier. The other thing that we might want to do with a pulley is to use it to create a belt drive. So a belt drive is very similar to a chain drive which we'll probably cover in other videos. But if I take a rubber band, this is a Lego rubber band from a Technic set, and I wrap it around two pulleys, I've now created a belt drive. So when I apply rotational energy to one axle, the friction as the rubber band travels around the two pulleys is going to cause the second axle to rotate as well. And this is very practical if you want to attach, let's say, a motor to one side and run a mechanism or a wheel on the other side. 
Now, if you don't have any LEGO Technic elastics, no problem. You can just use some regular elastics to create a belt drive. Here I've got a household elastic and a broccoli elastic. And that brings me to an important point about pulleys and the size of the groove. So obviously, this tiny little groove works fairly well for running this nice thin rope. But if the rope was any bigger than this, uh, like let's say this wider Lego rope, the rope would be at risk of falling out of the groove every time force was exerted on one end or the other. If I wanted to use a wider rope, I might need to use a pulley with a wider groove with more room for that rope. And the same is true for these elastics. If I want to run something as large as this elastic, or maybe as wide as this Lego chain, I'm going to need a bigger pulley with a bigger groove. So now we might want to try that 2x2 two two round that we had earlier. We can get another 2x2 two two round, and that should work to create a drive mechanism with any old rubber band. And of course you can see the problem coming up here. As the mechanism runs, because there's no flange on this side keeping the elastic in place, eventually, eventually, yeah, eventually, eventually the elastic's gonna pop off. So now let's talk a little bit about friction. I've got two Lego people here and they are of equal weight so when they're sitting across these pulleys neither of them is going to fall up or down this makes perfect sense right they're in balance if i switch them around the other way it makes absolutely no difference they're still in balance if i add a couple of lego bricks to this person you would think that she would start to go down but she doesn't because of friction. So in this case, there's friction on this axle and there's friction on this axle. And all of that friction is slowing down this mechanism enough that two Lego bricks isn't enough extra weight to overcome friction in this mechanism. But if I add a third Lego brick on here, we'll see that suddenly we do have enough weight to overcome the friction in the mechanism and the heavier side of the load is going to fall down. So I'll add one more example to this. If I take this redirect pulley out of the equation and I switch it out for just this little peg here, you'll see that this peg creates so much more friction that the weight of three bricks isn't enough to overcome friction in the mechanism and cause her to fall. If I come back to two pulleys, again, she's going to fall. The smoother your pulleys are going to run, the less friction there is going to be in the system, and the easier everything's going to move. But sometimes you might actually want to create some friction. So here I have a Lego rubber tire and a 4x4 plate, and I'm going to sandwich it with another 4x4 plate and then a 2x2 brick to help hold it all together and keep the four by fours from turning. So I've now created a pulley that has a fair bit of friction inside of it because of that rubber tire. And what we're gonna demonstrate here with our Lego man who's wearing his little safety helmet is how much weight we can pick up with that friction. So here I have a 25 gram weight on one end of the rope and the Lego man on the other. Of course, if I bring this down till the rope is balanced and I let go, the weight is gonna come down because it's significantly heavier than the Lego man. If I start to turn this pulley, you can see that even though this weight is significantly heavier, I can actually lift that heavier weight because I have enough friction on this wheel that the rope is being captured by the rubber. And of course, it's not quite working. You can see as soon as I stop turning, 
the rope starts slipping and the weight comes back down because it's so much heavier than our little Lego man. And again, if I start turning, it's going to pick it up and then slowly slides back down. So this rubber tire is creating a lot of friction, but it's not actually enough friction to do what we want it to do. So let's get rid of that and let's switch to something else. So here I'm going to switch to a couple of little gears. And if I put a couple of little gears together here, I'm again going to create the shape of a pulley in that it's a wheel with a groove. And then I'm going to run my rope through that. So I've got the same 25 gram load and I've got the rope running through this new little pulley that I've made out of gears. And you can see that when I start turning that pulley, absolutely nothing happens because there isn't enough friction up here to be able to lift this load. But watch what happens if I separate the gears just the tiniest little bit. If I create a little bit of a gap, then the rope is able to fall into the gap and get captured might need a little bit more. The rope is going to fall into the gap and get captured. And now we can lift up that weight without the rope slipping. So sometimes you want and need a lot of friction on your pulley in order to create a mechanism. I think that's it for now. There's a quick look at Lego pulleys, what you can do with some pulleys, and how to come up with some pulleys if you don't have any for your creations.